all, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Today is a very important day in our history. Uh, this is the Charter Day, uh, June 14, uh, Charter Day of the Knights of Rizal. So I would like to um, congratulate all the Knights of Rizal all over the world. I am doing this vlog today to be able to highlight some of the minute aspects of the chartering of the Knights of Rizal, 70 years in the making. Um, we are a strong group. We uh, persevered in some of the most um, trying times in our history, in Philippine history and the Knights of Rizal history. And so I'd just like to give a uh, quick update on the Knights of Rizal until the uh, very momentous day on June 14, 1951, when the charter, or uh, official charter from the Philippine Republic by, was signed by President Elpidio Carino. So this special is about the 70th founding anniversary of the Knights of Rizal. Uh, and I am hoping this would be the initial part of a 10-part blog series on the history of the Knights of Rizal and what uh, opportunity, what uh, prime opportunity to start it with the uh, 70th chartering anniversary of our organization. Well, we can't really start um, talking about the history of the Knights of Rizal without mentioning Colonel Antonio Torres, the recognized um, person who started everything about the Knights of Rizal, our founder. In the day of uh, Colonel Antonio C. Torres was the start of the beginning of the Knights of Rizal, although the ideas has persisted since the death of our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. In fact, a few days after his death, um, President uh, Aguinaldo proclaimed Rizal Day uh, a few days after his death and also his first uh, uh, monument was put up uh, in um, in Bicol at that time, around that time also. Colonel C. Torres was a son of the Supreme Court uh, Justice Florentino Torres. He eventually became the um, chief of police of the Manila Police Department back then. Um, the main objective that he had in forming the organization, which is not news to Knights all over the world, is to ensure that we properly celebrate the birth and commemoration of the martyrdom of Dr. Jose Rizal. And uh, as a side note, the historical marker in the international headquarters, however, uh, maintains that the founding day was in 1909 and not 1911. But anyway, that's a side note. And uh, this uh, objective, the, the Knights of Rizal, that uh, precipitated uh, Antonio C. Torres to create the organization was given uh, life in 2012 under the leadership of Supreme Commander Regis, Sir Regis Romero II in um, December 31, 2012. They reenacted the uh, transfer of remains of Dr. Rizal from his mother's house in Binondo to the present Bagumbayan or Luneta, taken to uh, note, take notice of the uniform that they had uh, put on to reenact this. Um, on November 16, 1916, members of the uh, Knights of Rizal registered the uh, order as a corporation under Philippine laws. After five years, 
uh, Knights of Rizal was incorporated to be able to have a legal entity and be able to legally pursue business, a formal business under its name. Uh, of course, the incorporators were uh, Antonio C. Torres, Juan Flamenio, Martin P. De Vera, who also became a uh, supreme commander during the advent of the Second World War, Jose A. Del Barrio, and Jose S. Galvez. So these five names were the incorporators of the Knights of Rizal in November 16, 1916. And now on that, at that time, they only conferred two degrees, which is Caballero and Comandante. This is the uh, published picture by the International Headquarters of uh, Sir Antonio C. Torres um, in his uh, full regalia as a member of the of Manila's finest, the uh, Manila Police Department. During that time, uh, initiations were held every year uh, in two, two times in the death cell of uh, Dr. Rizal in June 19, his birthday, and his martyrdom, December 30. N the Knights of Rizal started with a, uh, a big boom, and uh, it attracted the cream of the crop that involved um, President uh, Quezon, Vice President Sergio Smeña, Speaker Manuel Rojas, all these three uh, personalities became presidents of the Philippines. Uh, the last Governor General before the Commonwealth, uh, General Governor General Frank Murphy, and the future president of the Repub of the uh, of the United States of America who also was a governor general in the Philippines Theodore Roosevelt and uh, as you can see here this is a published picture of the Knights of Rizal with um, President Manuel Rojas uh, third on the left on the front row their uniform was copied during uh, the 2012 uh, reenactment of the transfer of uh, results remain from Binondo, Manila to Bagumbayan or Luneta. We need a few years of incorporation within the Knights of Rizal was not only noticed by the cream of the crop in the uh, Philippine society, but it also embarked on ideals of the time. One of the activities that they embarked on was uh, sponsoring a play uh, that was entitled La Hoyas de Simon after this was uh, after the um, character in El Rizal's El Fulbusterismo. La Hoyas de Simon is a drama of three acts uh, staged in 1940 and during that time uh, the uh, divorce was um, a law in the Philippines and there was a big clamor to repeal the law and this play was able to portray the wise and fearless attack against divorce. The title is an allusion to Dr. Jose Rizal's character in El Filibusterismo, Simon, who used his jewels and wealth to corrupt and destabilize society. As you know, in El Filibusterismo, he did the same to uh, start a revolution and turmoil in the Philippines uh, as a character. Uh, the Tagalog translation, Ang Mga Hiyas Ni Simon, was written by Priman, Primo Arambolo in 1940. And also, incidentally, medals and banners were designed during those times of incorporation. Uh, during the outbreak of uh, World War II, uh, the most important undertaking was the restoration of the House of Rizal in Calamba, Laguna. This was um, taken charge by uh, architect uh, Juan Nakpil, 
who also became the national artist for architecture in the Philippines. He completed, because of the war, he completed a project in 1950. And the uh, marker uh, says the same about uh, restored, and it reads restored by executive order 145 of President El Pijo Carino with, Philippi with uh, funds mainly contributed by school children of the Philippines, inaugurated in 1950 with architect Juan F. Napil, who also became Supreme Commander. Uh, during the Japanese occupation, there was a time when the Knights of Rizal was scattered all over the country, and some of the members and officers of the Knights of Rizal did not survive specifically uh, Benito Sullivan uh, and uh, the Grand Commander, as it was called back then and not Supreme Commander, De Vera, they all perished uh, during World War II. He, uh, De Vera, was uh, Sup Grand Commander from 1937 to 1942. In 1947, five, uh, five years uh, right after the um, World War II, the Knights was able to hold an assembly to choose a new council of officers. And to the still general of the Philippines back then, Manuel Lim was the, uh, the new grand commander. And he served for three years, 1947 to 1950. Uh, in 1951, uh, architect uh, Juan Napil was uh, elected as grand commander. He served from 1951 to 1952. He's credited for creating the, the committee to study the um, having a bill uh, for granting legislative charter for the Knights of Rizal. Justice Ramon Osueta was the chairman of the committee. Uh, the members were Carlos Hilado and Pedro Sabido were the members. Authors of, of the bill were senators. Um, Enrique Magalona, Lorenzo Sumulong, Esteban Abada, Emilio Tria Tirona, Camillo Osias, Jerónima T. Pexon, the first female senator, Jose Avellino, and Ramon Torres. On May 8, Senator Osia sponsored a bill on the Senate floor and it was approved on second reading uh, in Toto. And the next day, President Elpidio Crinos certified the bill as urgent. And the following day, it was uh, unanimously approved on the third reading in the Senate. There was an exploratory note of the bill that's what, that was docketed as Senate Bill Number 251, and this is often uh, mentioned by uh, Knights of Rizal speakers uh, to um, give um, life to what the senators had in mind when they chartered the uh, Knights of Rizal. If I may, I, it reads, the purpose of the attached bill, which uh, became six, uh, 646, is to accord to the civic and organization known as Order of the Knights of Rizal, the same kind of official recognition and encouragement as that accorded to the Boy Scouts of the Philippines by granting to it a legislative charter and investing it with necessary powers to enable it to fully and more effectively to accomplish the laudable purposes for which it was organized. And what is that laudable purposes? This bill, if enacted into law, will also serve as a historical monument to Rizal, giving importance to 
Jose Rizal above and beyond the other heroes in the Philippines, of the Philippines. It will constitute an official recognition by the Republic of the Philippines of the inestimable value to the nation of his teachings and examples and of the wisdom and necessity of inculcating them in the minds and hearts of our people so they may strive to follow and practice them. Now, what is them? The authors and proponents of this bill believe that if the purposes thereof are faithfully and effectively carried out, social discipline, civic virtues, and love of justice will be fostered, promoted, and enhanced in this country, the Philippines, and that the Knights of Rizal as chartered entity in the most convenient is the most convenient instrumentality by which this desirable ends can be attained. Let Rizal's life and martyrdom influence and guide the, de the destiny of the nation. That was the explanation of why the charter was um, monumentalized by the legislature in the Philippines. The bill was sent to the House of Representatives the same day, and after five days, it was approved without amendment. Congressman Manuel Sosa of Cebu was the sponsor. After two weeks, in May 29, copies of the bill were sent to President Carino to be signed. And on June 14, this same day in 1951, he signed it into law as Republic Act number 646. So that is the history of the Knights of Rizal. It enabled the Knights of Rizal to make bylaws, rules and regulations consistent with the Philippine laws. During that time, Supreme Commander Nakpil laid the groundwork to revise the bylaws after having had this um, momentous event of the chartering. And among other things, he changed the title. This is when the title was changed from Grand Commander to Supreme Commander. So that is the end of part one to um, for us Knights of Rizal to remember this proud moment of uh, 646 and its relevance and the people behind it and the timeline when it happened. So again, to my brothers, Knights and Rizal, Nanam Nis Moriar, and I hope this helped in the celebration of our time, the chartering 70th anniversary of the chartering of our beloved organization. Thank you, and again, Anomnis Moriar.